Applying Policies to Cloud BCI Pipelines. Imagine this. As a Cloud BCI administrator, there are pipelines that run for multiple days on controllers that you manage, even though the normal time for those jobs to complete is maybe only a couple of hours. At this point, those jobs have been abandoned and really could be terminated, but that means work for you. As an administrator, wouldn't it be nice to be able to apply a policy to a controller that would force your pipeline authors to write their pipelines in such a way that conform to your organizational standards? Cloud BCI has a feature called Pipeline Policies that does just that. Here's today's starting point. I have a Cloud BCI controller version 2.319.2.9, and attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. The first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and just create a simple pipeline job. And I'm going to call this test and the pipeline, click OK. And this is just a trivial pipeline. I'm just saying sh echo hello. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And let's go ahead and run this once to make sure that it works. And of course, it finishes fine. By default, the CloudBees Pipeline Policies plugin is not installed. So let's go ahead and go over to our Manage Plugins and let's install that plugin. I'm going to type in policies. And what I see here is Clobby's pipeline policies. At the time of recording, the version is 1.7. So we'll select that one and download now and install after restart. And what you'll see now over on the left nav is an entry for pipeline policies. Now, up to this point, we've created and run this job once, and we've installed the pipeline policies plugin. But let's run the job one more time. If we click on build now and go into the logs for build number two, we're going to notice something different. And what we're going to see are entries now saying policies were not applied to this pipeline. So once the pipeline policies plugin has been installed, it is automatically on and enabled for this controller. So let's go take a look at our policies. And by default, there are no policies created, but the policy engine is available for us to create the policies. So let's create a new policy. I'm going to give it the name of pipeline timeout. Going back to our example when we started out, that we have some pipelines that can take days to run, even though they really should finish in a normal hour. Maybe there's some input steps or whatever the case may be. We're going to put in a policy that every pipeline that is run on this controller must complete in, in our case, we're going to say 30 seconds, but you may say three days or seven days, whatever your case may be. So I'm going to name it pipeline timeout. You can name it whatever you want. You can give it a description. You can also give it a filter. Now, what does the filter mean? What filter does is you can filter meaning any job that matches this pattern. So in the case of the example here, we see star star slash master means any job that is master. Or in this case of star star report handler master means any job that has report handler master in it, including something that even is like report a report handler master. Or if you want just one specific job, you can fully qualify where this job is. Now for our example, we're planning on having pipeline timeout be global to this controller. So I'm not going to go ahead and specify a filter. We can also specify a custom message. And if I wanted to say, if it fails, do I want to customize whatever it says? And again, in my case right now, I don't care about it. Now we have two actions that we can take when this policy is triggered. We can either fail or we can warn. Now for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and select warning. And if we go under rules, we see that we have four different rules that we can pick from. We have agent timeout, which means if a timeout is not set up for an agent, we'll get a policy exception. We also have a paused action timeout. We also have a paused action in agent. Again, all work roughly the same way with these three. But the one we're going to select is pipeline timeout. And the timeout that we're going to set, in our case, is 30 seconds. Now, if you wanted to understand what kind of timeouts I can set, 
You can look at the help and see you can get down to nanoseconds or even up to days. So let's go ahead and close this and let's click on save. And now let's go ahead and go back and run our job one more time. So we'll go to test, build now. And what we'll see is that the job will complete successfully, but there are numbers of warnings here. So we can see that there's a warning validation of pipeline timeout. A maximum of 30 seconds must be set for a pipeline. Now, one more thing that you're going to see here. For pipeline timeout in specific, not the other three policies, but for pipeline timeout only, it's going to tell us, please do not use a top level agent when using declarative pipelines. Use agent none at the top level as a best practice. And it takes you over to the documentation for that. So let's go back over to our job definition and let's refactor the job and see if we can get rid of that message. So if I say agent none, and for this stage, I say agent any. Let's click on save and click on build now. If we go take a look at four, we're still gonna see the same warnings again, including please don't use a top level agent. I'm okay with that because I know I've already refactored this pipeline to use a stage level agent. So I'm going to ignore that one for the moment since we already know that we have an agent none at the top level. So next up, let's go ahead and go back and modify our policy and move it from a warn to a fail and click save. Let's go run this job again. No changes to the job this time, but we can see now that this job has failed. And here's the validation for this. We want a pipeline timeout with a max timeout of 30 seconds. Since this pipeline does not have a timeout set, then this job failed. So let's go and modify the job and let's put in a 30 second timeout. So we'll go here and I already have my exact option that I need. So I'm gonna declare it at the global level. So what I'm saying here is my option timeout 30 seconds. Let's click on save. And then let's go ahead and do a build now. If we take a look at output of six, we can see that the timeout is set to expire in 30 seconds, which is good. That's what we want. The policy is set for 30 seconds. And we see that our echo hello worked. And at the very end, all policies were validated successfully. Now, what happens if I set my timeout on my pipeline to something greater than 30 seconds? Let's go ahead and set it to 31 seconds. I click on save, click on build now. What we're going to see in job run seven is that it failed because the pipeline timeout is set to 31 seconds, which requires the timeout values to be equal to or less than 30 seconds. When you're first setting up a policy, you will probably want to set it to a warning instead of a fail. That way, it gives your pipeline authors the time to modify their pipelines in order to align to these new policies. When the day arrives and you move those policies from warning to fail, you'll already know that if you need to go ahead and switch back to warning, everything will continue to work as it was before. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available for CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.